Hello, hello, and welcome. Today I want to talk about three of my favorite German classics. These are three books that I would highly recommend to anyone who's even a little bit curious about diving into German classics. We have a variety of themes that are covered here, um, many different types of narrators, so yeah, without further ado, let's dive into them. So number one, the book that I could recommend is Demian by Hermann Hesse. Where to start with Demian? This book is amazing. We get a narrator who is much older, but he's reflecting on his life, particularly his childhood, and all of the mentors he met that sort of shaped him into the person he is today. One of the major mentors that he meets is called Demian, and I think he meets him when he's around 11 years old. They meet at school, and Emil, our narrator, has grown up in a rather orthodox religious house household. He's very much brought up in this world, encouraging him to be a good boy, follow rules, listen to your parents, you know, all of that typical stuff that, you know, shapes us as children. But he finds he's very drawn to what he calls the dark side. And Demian happens to be part of the dark side, this, this world of rebellion and chaos. Demian as a character is absolutely fascinating. He's almost like otherworldly, like he's this charismatic, mystical, almost being. It's almost like he's not even a person. It is incredible the way Hesse has characterized Emil and Demian and the friendship that evolves between them. What's compelled me so much to devour this book when I started it was Hesse's writing style and just the way the story flows. I mean, this is a a master craft in writing. Let me read a quote for you guys. This is from the opening prologue. He says, I cannot call myself a scholar. I have always been and am still a seeker, but I no longer do my seeking among the stars or in books. I am beginning to hear the lessons which whisper in my blood. Mine is not a pleasant story. It does not possess the gentle harmony of invented tales like the lives of all men who have given up trying to deceive themselves. It is a mixture of nonsense and chaos, madness and dreams." If that doesn't sell you, I mean, I don't know what else would. Um, yeah, it's just, it, it's an incredible story. It's got guilt, it's got nature versus nurture discussions, self-discovery, Maslow would have loved this guy, and um, we've got a bit of a pathetic male protagonist, which are my favorite kind of protagonist. Moving on into number two, I can highly recommend The German Lesson by Siegfried Lenz. This is a novel that follows a young boy called Siggy, and we quickly grow to learn that he's living in a juvenile delinquent center, and we're not sure why he's there, but one day he gets called up by some like officer guy there who assigns him this project where he has to write an essay about the joys of duty, whatever that means to him. And at first Siggy is like, ugh, I don't want to do this, this is like so stupid. But then he gets an idea and rather caustically is like, you know what? Sure, I'll write the essay. And he proceeds to write, what is the rest of the novel? I thought this was such a clever setup from Lenz that, you know, in this opening chapter, we think the novel will be one thing, and then we shift into like Siggy's perspective, and this essay is just detailing his life, and we grow to see how he came to the delinquent center, and how his life was just so messed up, predominantly by his father. And what you really should know about this novel is that it's a post-World War II novel, so Lenz wrote this to really highlight the struggles of Nazi family children, so the children who grew up seeing their parents commit atrocious crimes or act very cruelly, and then sort of that the, the psychological processing that they've had to go through of navigating, you know, what does family mean to them, and how can you love someone who treats others so badly. It is, wow, a really introspective novel. It's very slow, I will say, if, if you don't vibe with slow stuff, this is not for you, but it's so atmospheric. It takes place in the far north of Germany. You feel like you're there, like just, wow. I'm kind of leaving out a major plot point about a painter <laughs> that takes a center stage of the story, but yeah, I don't want to give too much away, but 
This one is, I guess I could just describe it as atmospheric. It's really a testament to that generation and all that they went through. So yes, that is a recommendation. And finally, number three, oh my God, my favorite on the list is The Sorrows of Young Werther by none other than Goethe. We read this book in a lecture that I did called Love and Madness. That lecture was perfect. I love stories about obsession. I don't know if I've shared this with you guys yet, but stories about the characters just spiral irrationally and you just get to witness them break down. Love it. Chef's kiss. So this novel follows a young man called Veta who recently moved to a new town in the German countryside and he very much loves this new environment. He's telling his friend just how much he's enjoyed his time here and that he's met someone. He's met this young girl, like a maiden or whatever, and he's fallen in love with her. But the drama is she's engaged. Oh no, this causes the biggest man-child meltdown you've ever witnessed. And what's really cool about this novel is that it's an epistolary novel. So it's written all in the forms of letters, like the correspondence between him and his friend. So we just get to witness slowly the way he gets more unhinged and y'all, the drama in this book, it is incredible. You you initially sympathize with Vata, you're like, oh poor guy, like he's he has this like unrequited love situation going on. But slowly you're like, oh man, this man has problems. <laughs> and I love that for him. He's truly like giving Joe Goldberg. Like he's one Gatorade and one power bar away from turning into Joe Goldberg, okay? Because also this book takes place in like the 17 70s, I believe. It takes place during like the German Romantic era of literature, which I actually want to make a video on and I hope I'll get to sometime soon. But in any case, with that context in mind, um, for the German Romantic era, nature was a very strong theme about how like we should all sort of return to nature and nature is where the true harmony of life is. We cannot rationalize things the way um, the French were doing at the time with like French rationalism. So it, it really is all about finding beauty in nature and that we are a part of nature. And yet this is what causes Werther's downfall, his detriment, because he over romanticizes things to the point where he cannot think logically. And it's an incredible character study. You just want to grab your popcorn and watch this man's demise because he's just so obsessed with this girl. I love it. I love it. It's just iconic. All right, that is it from me. Thank you for watching. Please let me know what German classics you've enjoyed or which of these three you'd be interested in checking out. And um, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>